Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the BJJ Foxcast. I am your host, Alex Martinez, and today I am really excited to have the mad scientist himself, Malachi Friedman, on the show. He's a black belt under Ricardo Laborio. He is the owner of Black Label, black label Martial Arts. Can you remind me exactly what town you're in? I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. That's right. Okay. And um, he is a uh, serial entrepreneur and a um, really into screenwriting. Let's talk about that a little bit, man. Tell me about screenwriting. Uh, I wish I was more into it that I, I followed through with half of what I, what I was writing. Um, but yeah, I, I've always liked TV. I've always found myself trying to figure out what is going to happen. Or like I call, try to call things out on TV. I'm like, well, oh, that person's going to come back and this is what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, like I, I try to see what the, the, the hidden tie-ins are. Um, and I, and I really like TV. Unfortunately, you know, they say TV rots your brain and yeah. It's one of those things where like there's so much good TV now. There's Succession. There's we talked about Narcos. Yep. yep. There's you know Breaking Bad, which a lot of my you know I, I made an instructional and I called a guard after uh, after Breaking Bad. Yeah. And so man, I I really really like TV, and unfortunately it's an addiction of mine. But so is Jiu-Jitsu, So I'm kind of balanced that out. Yeah. So it's uh you're you're kind. Are you would you consider yourself a, a good storyteller? I could be so. I think I'm a, I'm a really good storyteller on paper. I think yeah. I'm a good storyteller on when I'm comfortable around people. But there's definitely something I've always thought of as generally what a good storyteller is. And like, so it's somebody like uh, who I think is brilliant is a comedian, but more of a storyteller is Dave Chappelle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would love to be and. And then whenever you're looking at business or you're looking to make business relationships or leadership relationships, you look at, okay, well, how do I, um, how do I, um, enhance my, my credibility? How do I enhance my, you know, like what people want to be around? And I think that I, I, I need to learn how to speak better, you know what I mean? And, and flow with a story better. So I can tell a good story to people that are already used to listening to me. Yeah, yeah, you know, they yeah. understand my patterns, and they understand if I'm like stuttering through something, or if I'm if I'm using an F word in place of something else, right? You know, like yeah. F in F in this, you know, like I'm thinking, and so I think I would like I've I've tried to to buy a couple different books on how to storytell, and I think yeah. that's what I'd be better. So, so am I a good storyteller? Yeah, I have a lot of good good stories, and they're interesting. But do I know how to build a story throughout? speaking with it no I, I i definitely would like to learn how to do that i think that's something i've been waiting for a master class I, I bought master class one time and i've been waiting for them to like have some kind of like they have all the skills in the world except the skills i want to learn uh gotcha like, gotcha yeah you know like how to tell a good story not on paper how to tell a good story and cadence and how to bring stories along how to tie things in you know so yeah uh I'm a good storyteller on paper, but you, I don't think you'd say so if, you know, like as a, like a speaker. Right. Yeah. I think, I think George, George Carlin was probably one of my favorite storytellers. You know what I mean? Like you said, like sure. along the same lines of J Dave Chappelle, like they'll, they'll kind of get you at the edge of your seat and then they just hit you with a punchline and it's fantastic. Cause they kind of, they drag you through this, through this story, right? This little maze. And at the end there's that little bell and you just laugh your ass off, man. It's fantastic. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. Yeah, that's uh, and that's the way that you gotta learn how to how to speak, and I think that's a skill. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's it's a skill that I don't think is taught. Like, is you know, like there's no like, you know, adults for education. Right. It's like storytelling. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> that should be there because that that enhances people's careers, that enhances yeah. people's positions. Yeah. But yet we're we're still we're gonna do other stuff instead. Yeah. Well, you know, you have, and for, the, for those folks that, that have not followed you on social media, I highly recommend it. You have a lot of great information on there. A lot of good, like little, little chunks of instructionals that you put on there. Um, and it seems like you're pretty natural in front of the camera. How are you at, uh, like public speaking? Do, are you, do you struggle with that? Or are you pretty good with that? Oh, I mean, there's always a, so I, I do a lot of like women's self-defense seminars. I've done, I've done, I've, I like a lot of people are not going to believe that I'm I'm somewhat introverted and I'm somewhat have a nervous you know belly mm. um, when it comes to but um, 
you know, I, I take it to a lot of like things like MMA and things like fighting or stuff like that. It's like, yeah, you're nervous. Yeah. Speaking doesn't come exactly natural. Like it's not, it doesn't just like, like, yeah, I can't wait to get in front of these people and speak. I can't wait to get in front of those people and speak. It's to a degree, but I am also aware that I'm not the best at it. And I, and that I can stutter, I can mess up, but I just don't worry about it. That's the biggest yeah. thing is like, like, what else am I going to do? I, I'm not going to get any better by not doing it, right? Yeah. I'm not going to get any better at competing by not competing. I'm not going to get any better at jiu-jitsu by not doing jiu-jitsu. So I'm not going to get any better at speaking to large groups of people, you know, it, without speaking to large groups of people. So I've had, like, up to 100 people that I've been that I've been teaching. Yeah. And sometimes I think the, the biggest mistake I ever make is trying to be perfect as I wrote it down. Mm. And I think I stopped doing that. I, I write down, I think like, man, that, the way I, I did that last speech was, was really, really good. And it was really, everybody loved it. So I got to, I got to hit all those notes again, all those, all those marks. Yeah. Yeah. And you're so worried about hitting the marks that you miss the marks and you end up stumbling over yourself, trying to get back on, on, on page rather than when you should have just opened yourself up and been like, I hope I hit this. If I don't hit this, I'll, I'll loop back around and see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, all right, it just didn't make it on. It just didn't make it into the, the speech today. Yeah. And, and it's, it's kind of like, you know, you got to learn to read the room too. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, the room, the room changes, maybe the speech changes a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. If you're doing a seminar for like, you know, brown belt and above invitation only kind of class, it's going to be a very different speech than, you know, a bunch of white belts and, you know, blue belts in, in the room. So yeah, I, I can totally see that. Yeah. So, um, so t tell me a little bit about um, how you got into martial arts and, and how you found jujitsu. Uh, so I was about 18. Um, I had gotten out of school. Um, I was living in a house with uh, two other guys and this was a house we definitely should not have been able to rent. Somehow they rented it. I don't know who they gave, who allowed us to get into this house. Um, but I mean, I was partying and drinking and doing a lot of stuff like that. And, um, I really had, didn't have much direction, you know what I mean? Like, like I, I really enjoyed just partying and, and I would get in a lot of fights, a lot of, like, you know, had a, a lot of adrenaline. A lot, I loved all that stuff. I loved the fighting. I, I loved getting drunk and like having war stories coming, going home with like a, you know, like with one friend's got a bloody nose, you know, you don't remember you don't remember whose tooth is in your, is it stuck in your, in your, <laughs> in your, in your knuckle. Fist. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. so stuff like that, that I really enjoyed, but then we'd also have fights in my uh, front yard. So we would, we, we wouldn't punch really. We would just like throw each other around and try to like slam each other. Mm. And uh, one of my good friends, Jason Gregory, uh, he decided like, so I went with him and he like choked me out like 30 times. Wow. He was also a wrestler. He's a blue belt in jujitsu. This was probably year 2000, 2001. Okay. Right. Um, and he just murdered me. And I think most people, when they got beat up by him, they like, you know, they like, oh, that's bullshit, whatever. I, I don't want to wrestle him. He's stupid to wrestle okay. him. Yeah. And I ended up going upstairs, like, so like, to, to our top. We had a like a, a room with no, no furniture because we didn't have furniture. <laughs> right. The largest room we had. And we would wrestle on the carpet. And I would get like severe burns all over my my knees and elbows. And I'd like yeah. tie uh, rags on my elbows and knees because I'm bleeding through on the carpet. <laughs> and I mean, he just beat me up a bunch. And then he took me to his school. And the school was very, very small. And that, there wasn't really any direction with yeah. the school. Um, you know, like... So I, I would go there, train, go out, drink, party, fight a little bit, get into some like challenges with, with a couple of friends or acquaintances. And at some point I was got in trouble for a couple of fights that happened. Um, and I was like, I'm going to go to jail. This is it. Like, yeah. I know I'm going to jail. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is going to be, this is going to be like, this is going to be jail or dead. Wow. Um, and I decided to move to Oregon as, and start an MMA fight, start an MMA, become an MMA fighter. Um, and that's what I did. I moved far, far away and I made sure that I couldn't come home 
you know, I had, I had done this previously. I'd moved out and left, lived in a gym somewhat like about two hours away from me. Wow. And I, it was very, very rough the way that that gym operated and the way it was and just the living circumstance of living inside of a gym. Yeah. And yeah. so whenever I wasn't able to stay there anymore, I moved to Oregon and I met a lot of great people and I just reconnected with one of those people. I have a, uh, we're doing a huge MMA website, instructional website, huge. Dennis Davis, he's um from, he was team quest Portland, Oregon. Um, and he's now the head coach of extreme couture. Okay. And, uh, me, him and a guy named Joachim from Sweden, Ingberg from Sweden, we put together a, a team of, of coaches that are building instructionals and build and like breaking down the highest level of, of stuff. So I've been able to keep relationships from, you know, from my very, very, very beginning days of MMA, um, and I moved around a bunch, you know, mm. I went from, I went to Oregon, I went to the bus and I didn't necessarily wanted to, didn't want to be a jujitsu fighter. You know what I mean? I didn't want to be a submission guy. I was, I, in my mind, I wanted to be like, you know, like Chuck Liddell type, dude, yeah. you know, like yeah. knocking people out. But when you go to Oregon, and you don't know how to wrestle. You're going to be put on your back a bunch. And so guess what? You learn how to play guard. You learn how to do all the jujitsu stuff. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up gravitating towards that. And then I did a bunch of moving around. I, I, I mean, I, I trained with some really, really, really high level guys. I've, I, you know, been in some big rooms. Yeah. Um. I went to Florida. I think my my final my finale was I went to I, I was with Evan Tanner. Evan Tanner was my coach. He was also the UFC middleweight champion. Um. He had a huge drinking problem during the time I was with him. Uh. But we kind of like a Rick and Morty type, you know, thing where. Like, like it, it, it couldn't be any more, more like Rick and Morty, you know, like in the spaceship where they're, yeah. you know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm just brought along for the ride and he's drunk and, and, and taking us to like, to go do crazy shit and, wow. you know, fight, learn how to do this, run up a mountain, whatever we were doing. And then I ended up moving to Jersey for a little bit. Then I went to back home to Charleston, got a job coaching there. And I decided that the, that the team was. At least the organization was very, very uh, immature, not ready to have. So I then I got it offered a spot in America Top Team. I went to America Top Team, got met Ricardo Laborio, um, ended up getting injured and becoming a coach. So, wow. and then I moved here and I moved back to home in Charleston. What do you, What do you think you were looking for? A child. Oh, nice, man. Huh? So, so at what point did you get married? Uh, in in that, when, while you were moving, did you meet your wife and and I met and my wife in, in in Florida? Oh, okay, okay. So that yeah. that's kind of like that was kind of like your mainstay, right? Before you moved back to Charleston. Yeah. Yeah, I stayed in Florida since two thousand and six, two thousand seven, maybe two thousand seven. I went to uh, it was right around the top, right before Mike Brown won his his WEC title against your eye favor. Yeah. Yeah. So. What, and what do you think you were looking for while you were moving around to all these places? Um, I mean, I always had good, good things going for me. I mean, when I went with, when I was in Oregon, I met Evan. Evan was, you know, like a, a really good friend of mine. He became really, I became, became really, really close and attached to him. I really trusted him a lot. Um, we moved to, to Vegas while he was going through a, some of his trouble. Um, and we lived with a really, really nice lady who I think he was dating. Um, I mean, there's there's things where it said that she wasn't dating him or something, but mm. they definitely had a relationship of some sort. Um, and then, so I'm living in Vegas, and then he goes, we go back to Oregon, and uh, he wanted to do a youth thing like so like he's you know he's a bit crazy he wanted to do a youth thing where he where he wanted to get a bunch of troubled youth he wanted to put them in his garage he had a huge garage and he wanted us to live in the garage too and I, at some point i just thought i was maybe maybe i was wrong maybe i was right i thought i was above that i didn't want to be around troubled youth that could slip my neck in my sleep i'm like i don't know what, <laughs> what you're thinking dude like you know yeah. it's what, what what we're talking about schizophrenics you know like liars yeah. cheaters stealers like you know like 
like, yeah, we're not the greatest people. Like we weren't the greatest people, me and Evan, you know, like we, we had, we had, that's the conversation we had. It's like, you know, we're not much different than these other people where we come from. Yeah. Somebody just gave us a chance. But if you put enough people in a room of liars, cheaters, thieves, and, and stuff like that, sooner or later, you're going to get, you're one of those guys is, is not going to get rehabilitated. They're not yeah. going to find their passion. They're just bad people. Yeah. And I think that was our break. I kind of like our break was that I didn't want to be there during that. And he thought I was being a real piece of shit for not, you know, like not, not living up to what he, I think envisioned. Yeah. Um, and what we talked about. So yeah, maybe I backtracked a little bit and was like, there's no way I want to be around this, like 16 guys. You want to put 16 guys in a house? Yeah. That, you know, that's a lot. So, yeah. That's a lot of I different up, personalities. Up, yeah. It's like the ultimate fighter house. I mean, like, yeah, some guys are good. Some guys are, are not so good. You see all the time guys, you know, getting in trouble for, for murder, beating their wives, UFC fighters. Yeah. It doesn't mean because they're a good fighter or because they've been able to keep themselves out of trouble for six years that they aren't, that, that they couldn't have done something previous to that, you know, like, right sexual yeah. assault, whatever. I mean, just, there was just too many what ifs that I didn't like about it. So I moved to New Jersey where I, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't really get the best training there. I, I should have, I should have gotten better training, but it, this is where I was fighting out of. I was fighting out of New Jersey. I was having right. most of my fights and I listened to a guy that I shouldn't listen to um, about, Oh, he was going to take care of me. He was going to put me in, you know, he was going to get like, he was going to, employ me he was going to you know use use me on a lot of different cards and he ended up just like ghosting me like wow. you know like he he would pop up every now and then when he needed me but he basically ghosted me and left me in like a really shitty town in in, in levittown pennsylvania mm. and like i'm like basically i got hookers and shit in the in the in the doorways uh while it's like winter you know like wow. i guess that's that's what they could that, that's what it was for them yeah you know but like you couldn't even get in to pay your bill. You had to like pay your bill through a slot. Oh, there was like gosh. 80 cameras on it. So like, you know, in a, yeah. in a steel bar. Yeah. So wow. It, it, it was, it wasn't the best. And so I went to, I went back to all of a sudden Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina, somebody offered me a job. That job was okay. But the, I was, it was like, Hey, this is the end. This is it. I'm a coach yeah. now. Like, yeah. And then, I got an offer to go out there and, and work with Charles McCarthy was a really sweet guy. He he saw some of my stuff on the underground when the underground, I haven't been on the MMA underground. Like, I don't know if anybody knows that the, the, the UG forum. Mm. Um, I, I used to be a regular there. Okay. Um, and uh, he saw my stuff. He invited me out. I, I stayed with Cole Miller um, and I was getting Cole ready for some stuff. And I worked with him. I was like, well, this is great. Cole, like, I thought I could beat Cole in my head, mm -hmm. you know, like, because he was on the, he was on the Ultimate Fighter uh, lightweights. And I'm like, he's six one, six two, but I'm six foot. I felt like I was stronger than him. What I watched of him, I didn't know that I was, I, I felt like I was on the same ground as him. Yeah. And he beat, he, you know, he beat me up. Yeah. Um, and right, rightfully so. And I, can and i always admit to that to like whoever beat me up i can admit to yeah um and that was what got my brain yeah. thinking going like hey listen man you're not where you think you are mm -hmm. you know like there's the this guy is this guy is better than you that's the truth yeah. and either you're going to be around people that are better than you and you're going to get better or you're going to not and i ended up moving to florida wow yeah. wow okay so um how old were you at that point I want to say I turned 25 in Florida. Okay. So I was 24. Okay. I turned 20. I know I turned 25 because I remember thinking I'm a quarter of a century. <laughs> yeah. But you're still in your prime, right? You're still in your prime. So yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So, so, you know, going back to the, the guy that was, um, the guy in New Jersey that was managing you, is that pretty common for guys, you know, coming up to get, you know, get caught up with people who don't have their best interests in mind when it comes to the fight game? Or, I mean, how do you, how do you mitigate that? Like, how do you, 
Because I mean, I, I, I think, think you're looking for a break, right? And some people just promise you. We're looking for wrong. man. Like, so listen, everybody tries to pretend that MMA fighters are so valiant and they're such hardworking people. Hardworking people are those that, I mean, I guess it's just two different kinds of people. I I don't want to stand in a retail store for eight hours mm. with my feet killing me, my back killing me. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I want to fight and I'm, I don't mind getting beat up for three or four hours and like and loving it compared to doing something that to other people is more is better. You know, yeah. like, so like, yeah, but if you're an MMA fighter, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, I sacrificed for this. I did this for this. I did this. Yeah, kind of. But this was better than everything else. Right. You, yeah. Yeah. You know, like it's better than anything else. And this guy who, who, who sold me the moon, I was also, Hey, let's get, you know, like, when, yep. Yep. You know, like you got money, let's party. You know, yeah. like, you know, like what do you want to do? Like, like I'll I'll be your muscle. What do you want? Yeah. You know, so there's there's that kind of thing where like I, I can't say that like, well, do a lot of fighters get caught up in that? Yeah, because a lot of fighters don't want to work. They don't mm -hmm. want to do the, they just want to fight. And if some dude with money has got something to say about it, then they're gonna hang around that dude that's got money so that they can do what they want to do, which is fight, which is train. Yeah. yeah. So are we, no, I don't think anybody's innocent in this. Yeah. And that's why I look at like, the, I talked about the Rick and Morty thing with Evan. This, I wasn't innocent in it. You know what I mean? Like I was, I knew what I was riding along with and he wasn't innocent. He knew who he had with him. Yeah. You know, like after, after me, there was another guy and after, you know, like he was, that he was with. And then after that guy, there was another guy that he was with. So he was constantly picking up Morty's yeah. and you know, like, but I, you know, He's is he innocent? No. Am I innocent? No. I knew what I was. I was riding around with the world champion. Mm, you know, like yeah. a UFC world champion. How how often do you get an opportunity to do that? Yeah, I mean, never. Right? I mean, not often. So yeah, you jump often. on that boat and you say that. Well, I know that this is a shitty circumstance and that he's not in the right right state that he should be in, but he's also a world champion. If yeah. he wasn't a world champion, if he wasn't a fighter, maybe I wouldn't have been on that on that boat with him you yeah know, maybe i wouldn't have been on that but you know like we all use each other in, in different ways it's not to say that we don't love each other and that we don't care about each other but we all use each other for what's possible yeah you know especially when you're trying to climb up uh a stairwell that that where there is no clear defined way of getting up there yeah yeah that's true yeah i mean it, it's it's kind of like i mean there's kind of a roadmap today i guess but i mean back in you know, early two thousands. I mean, everybody's kind of make trying to make their own way, right? Because there wasn't really, yeah, yeah there wasn't really a roadmap. Um, so tell me about your your academy, uh, black black label martial arts. How did that get started, and and what was the foundation of that? Was it jujitsu? Was it other martial arts? What what was it? So I was coaching some UFC guys uh, at at top team, and I was I was more of a jujitsu guy than anything else mm -hmm. um, at that point because I had two neck surgeries. So I was done fighting. Gotcha. You know, um, and the, as soon as like, I already knew I was, I was going to be a coach, you know, like I had, I'd been, I worked for nothing. I, mean, I worked for scraps, yeah. you know, and I, and I coached, I coached guys for nothing, no money whatsoever, like $25 an hour, a private, mm -hmm. you know, if I, they buy 10 privates from me, I, I do this. Nowadays, my guys are like asking for like 60 bucks, 60 bucks a private. Yeah. My, you know, people that aren't black belts either. Wow. And I just said, yes, all the time. Yes, 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 yes. Like when I had the, I had a neck brace on and I was working and I was, and I was driving kids back from a, from, from their school to the after school at top team, mm. you know, like I just kept saying yes, yes, yes. And you know, that pays off if you keep saying yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because at some point people pay you back. Or one person does, not yep. people. Yep. One person pays you back. Yep. But as soon as Laborio told me that he was leaving, I started making a, a real big plan to get out of Top Team. It was gonna. I, I felt like Top Team was gonna like implode. There was no like without Laborio being there, 
there's some there were some just nasty people there you know mm. there's just like you know there's some scum lords that don't even know how to fight don't know how to teach don't know how to coach yeah but they're on the they're on that um in that like little pit of yeah. like who, who who's gonna take laborio's space yeah they're, nobody's they're about gonna, to say that yeah who's gonna who's gonna occupy the space right yeah yeah yeah, right. yeah. and so it's like so as soon as i knew that that was happening i i got my stuff together i started planning i luckily uh was able to coach kimbo oh no was my largest i didn't know that day. okay i coached yeah. him against Tim, kim shamrock wow okay so, yeah i was the, i was the game plan for him against kim um and we basically figured out like so the 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 the, the technique that he used to get out was we went over the night before. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, so we went over all this stuff. I mean, we went over a ton of leg locks because we thought Kim was going to look for leg locks. Yeah. And we we had a little bit of homework done that he was training with the old Lions Den. He wasn't training with anybody new, mm. right? And so I'm like, okay, well, he's not training with anybody new. He's going to go for these old leg locks. Like, you know, he's still going like, to – he knows how to do everything else. But then, like, I, at night, we used to work out around 3 a.m., so like this is Kimbo's time where Kimbo likes to work out 3 a.m. Yeah. You know? And we're kind of sitting there. I'm like, hey, Kimbo, let me, I'm you know, I feel like I missed something. Let's go over this. He's like, ah, no, nah, dude, I'm done. We're done. The fight's kind of happening. I'm done. I was like, well, man, I really feel this way about something. And he's like, I said, what's about this? Uh, there's a guy named like, you know, they had, he had bouncers with him, you know, like uh bodyguards. Guess mm. he, he's a very, very famous person. Yep. He doesn't need bodyguard support. He needs people to, for him to smile, smile, shake a hand, maybe do a uh, an autograph in the hotel or the airport, but then somebody to push them away. Yeah, because yeah. he is he was a mega star. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like seeing. I, I would guess it would be like seeing Fifty, 50 Cent. Yeah, you know, like, right, right, right. Who, yeah. Who a determination like that? We're like you. You know what you're looking at as soon as you see who he is. You're like, oh shit, that's Fifty Cent, or oh shit, that's that's like you know, like the, that's this guy. Yeah, I know who that is. Yes, yeah. his, his appearance cannot. He can't go. He can't, can't go disguised. He's not Leonardo DiCaprio. Right. Where he can wear a shirt. He has bodyguards. He is a giant human being with a giant beard. Yeah, and you know it's Kimbo Slice. So yeah. I told. I said, listen, if I can get this guy, I think the guy's name is Squeak or something. If I can get out of this rear naked choke, that he puts me in. You, I'll show it to you. So he did it to me, and I got out. He's like, there he was like laughing, tripping about it. And I said, no, no, do it again. He's like, oh, do it again, do it again, do it again. And he puts me in and I get out. Well, the way I was getting out was because I figured that Ken Shamrock wouldn't have changed much of his his technique. So he did the rear naked choke here and then tried to put the 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 arm over the head. Yep. Right. And we all know that peeling the head, the hand off the head and then trying to lift that over. Is going to be the escape in a 1997 rear yep. naked choke. Yeah, <laughs> like even today I call it the Ken Shamrock 1997 rear naked choke <laughs> because we, I, I, he's not doing this. Right, you know, he's not stings in like a like a like a modern black belt. Yeah, you know. So I was able to do, show him that, and he was got put into the choke. He got out, then knocked him out, and then. He he doubled my so my pay was only like two point five percent of something, which is okay. a lot yeah. compared to what he was getting for that for that fight. Yeah, um, and it doubled my pay, and it gave me enough money to move some money around and be able to open up a school. I found a perfect spot that didn't ask for too much. It was an old dance studio. Yeah, and just from there it was that's how it just kept going. That's awesome, man. That's a freaking cool story. How, you know, and, and guys like Kimbo, um, I mean, you know, he, he made his way, I, I, I gotta say pretty, pretty rough. I mean, you know what I mean? He was, a he was like a, a, a I hate to, like a YouTube type of sensation. Right. Then he got into MMA. How hard, how hard did that guy work? How, how, how hard of a worker was he? Hard enough. I mean, yeah. his body was, was, was busted. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, I don't think a lot of people understood the shape, like, you know, this was, he was strong as hell. The sport was, he was too old for the sport at the time the sport got to him. Yeah. And the, but before anybody got to him that, that, that should have. 
Mm. You know, like he could have been Francis Nagano had he had there been certain people in his corner telling him, like, don't work like all the people that that maybe said that he was worked with this guy or worked with that guy, he never worked with them. Wow. Right? Yeah. So it's all bullshit that the management put on. So yeah. the management put on this like these blinders that he's getting he's getting trained by this guy. He's getting trained by this guy. None of those guys are they're just coming in like for the day to take pictures. Oh, I you got know? you. Yeah. And the management didn't think about, oh, well, how do we add crew? How do we get him better at fighting? They're thinking, how, how do we make as much money and as much connections as possible? Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to say it like I think, like like what I think it is. I don't think Boss Rutten coached him more than seven to 10 hours. Wow. In his entire, but he was a Boss Rutten guy. Yeah. yeah. In the beginning. Yeah. And you know, I was like, Come on with that. I, like, you guys did more damage to his career off of trying to make money. And it may have been Kimbo's fault, too. You know, like, he may have saw the money and been like, yeah, I'm going to partner with this guy. I'm going to partner with that guy. I'm going to do, you know, like, that's going to make me the most amount of money. And that's the thing that's going to sell the most to the public that he's now working with Boss Rutten. I don't think he worked with Boss Rutten at all. Yeah, yeah. Did he come up and live with you? Did he come up and live in, in the Carolinas or where, were, where was it he that you were supposed going? to? Okay. He was supposed to. I, I think management then got into his ear again. You know, like he was like before, and he was probably the nicest guy that ever lives, that, that ever was around, man. This, oh, is, this cool. is a real sweetheart of a human being. Yeah. I mean, he's rough around the edges. There's definitely not like when I, when I say he's a sweet human being, I, I mean, for the terms of what he of, of of who he is and where he came from, but he's the only guy that that I would think that like had a hundred percent loyalty to 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 a fault. You wow! Know? Yeah, and he all, I mean he came up he came up during my grand opening, you know during my grand opening he came up, paid his own way, blew up with three other guys, paid for almost everything that he was doing. Wow! You know? Yeah, and and I mean because I, he knew I didn't have the money for that he just knew. Yeah, you know, and this and this is a guy that like, and I didn't take the, take any extra money from him, but he was trying to like put money in my hand all the time. Oh, that's five thousand so dollars. He was trying to put in my hand. Yeah, I'm like, dude, no, man, I don't need, I don't like, I need, of course, I need it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't need it like you think I do. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't know what that five thousand is going to do. I'm not going to do anything different. It's not going to change my life. You're just yeah. giving it to me, and like I appreciate it, but if you, I can't. If I took it from him, then I would feel like I didn't earn it. I didn't give it. And it starts, you know, like, and I'm sure a lot of people take that. Just take it from him. You know, yeah. okay, yeah, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. I, I said, I told him, like, you know, like, no, nah, when you have another fight, I'll I'll coach you and, and you can pay me for that fight. And he had that one fight with Dada and then he had the heart heart disease and the heart problem and he died. Yeah. So it, yeah. He didn't get much opportunity to really talk to him because – he was being kind of ushered around again. Yeah. You know, like management moved him from here to the here to, to, to go to, he was in Holland. Mm. Um, we're working with like Dutch, I think out of Mike's gym, he was working with Mike's gym. It was amazing. I mean, those yeah. guys are amazing. I have no, no clue what was actually taking place, but Mike's gym is like, you know, where Manhoff comes from. Yep. Yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. So, wow. I yeah. know I, I didn't, you know, I was, I was able to, I was lucky enough to be able to talk, stay in touch with his wife for the, for about a couple of years after that. And then, uh, you know, like she would answer like different, like we talked, we text here and there just saying, you know, like happy birthday, happy birthday to the kids. How are you doing? And then like, that kind of like fizzled out and, you know, people, you know, I'm sure that she wanted to move on from her husband's friends yeah. at some point. And so I haven't talked to her, but I th she was also a, a, an amazing lady. Net, um, her, and the kids are, are you know, uh, Kimbo's daughter's amazing, you know, yeah. and Kimbo's son Bam Bam is a, is a good kid. That's cool. So it, it was nice, but but I get it too. You know, like we're like you can't continue a relationship off of somebody else's relationship. Yeah. At some it's point, hard. you got to move along and move on and try to, you know, like. Stay, you know, stay with his family, but not stay with a friend of his that's been, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, man. I miss him. I miss what it could have been, what could have been after that. But it's all, it, things happen for a reason. And I can't say that that him dying happened for a reason, but.
I hear you. No, I hear you. I mean, anything happens. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just, you know, just the fact that you, you, you cared enough to, you know, always tell them the truth and, you know, and, yeah. and, and see those little things and, you know, study opponents for them and just give them the little nuggets that actually, you know, got him the win. So that, that's, that, yeah. that's gotta mean a lot to him. And uh, I'm sure it meant a lot to his family too, man. I mean, it set him yeah. up pretty well. So um, yeah, man. Um, any, any other fighters that you have coming up right now? Are you, are you, are you um, with anybody right now? I mean, I have a, I have a slew of amateurs um, that have a real depth of potential there's just issues. I mean, we just have issues. Like some guys are, are too too small for the weight class. Mm. Um, some guys are uh, different than what I was, which was like, you're going to live in a really shitty situation. Like you live with five other people yeah. to, pay, to pay no rent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All you have to do is train and maybe bounce once in a while. And so there's people that will do that for an extended amount of time. I had one guy that did that for a long time and he has, I still think he has a lot of potential. He just, his mental, his mentality kind of broke for a bit. Mm. Um, like, you know, like his, you know, like he, we all, we all, we're all un, unsure of who we are. Yeah. But I think he had one, a loss or two that really put him into panic mode in the fights that he was going to, that the same thing was going to happen. Yeah. And I think he's getting, you know, he's, he's more focusing now on his mind and ment the mental side of things. So, yeah, I mean, we have potential, potential guys. Um, I'm more working with uh, other fighters in other areas with, um, like, like if we're talking about like, like big names, um, you know, there's guys out there that, like already have coaches, so I'm never gonna step in and say like, "Oh well, I'm with this guy," or I, right? I've coached before. I stay in contact with, do some study for them. So it's a couple champions, and and some high level organizations. I'm just not gonna mention them because they're not my fighters. No, it's it cool. Feels, yeah, totally good. It yeah, it feels kind of like 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 a like shitty to to because they have guys camps that they're working with. Yeah. Um, but I, I have guys that that you know like. There's a group of fighters that were working. It's called the Winning Corner. Me, uh, Dennis Davis, um, and Joe Kim we're, we're we're putting together MMA stuff. So we work with each other's fighters, and it's probably going to be a. I mean, like we we hope it's going to be something amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we. I mean, I, I, so I work with a good a good group of of well known guys, but I just I'm not going to mention them just because. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> they're not my. They're not. They're not my product. Yeah, you know I mean, I may have a little bit of thing in there. That's up to them whether whether they ever want to mention that. Yeah, and you know, unless I feel like I've given way more, I'm not gonna. You know, I get it. Yeah, I'm man. not gonna step on anybody, any other coach's toes. Yeah. So let me let me ask you about because I I am completely ignorant when it comes to MMA fight camps, right? Uh, I you know I hear they're like six to eight weeks long. What's it, what is it what is it like being in a, in a in a camp with a with bringing up a fighter? What what is it like like do they show do they usually show up like in shape ready to go or is it something you gotta you gotta beat them into shape or you gotta work them into shape or, or what's this that like? Really depend. This is gonna really depend on where your fighter is, mm -hmm. where where he's training out of. I mean, if, if a guy's so like where I've just been recently is Extreme Couture. Mm. I talk to guys and they have no fights on the board, but wow. they're training every day. Mm -hmm. And then I've been in I've been in camps or I've been in, in, in on teams where I haven't seen the guy in three months and he comes in and he's got a fight in eight weeks. Wow, you know, and he's heavy. I, there's guys that stay ready all the time. There's guys that are only ready when they get a call and they don't train. It's almost like they don't even care about the sport. Yeah. They don't care about the tra like training is super fun, right? Fighting is fun. That's why we do a lot of it. We like we either like grappling hard, we either like doing this. So we don't want to miss out on on beating people up on, uh, you know, like yep. like because that's what we do. So we we want to get a little bit of it. We want to get better and we want to feel better about ourselves. But there's guys that stay ready, there's guys that don't stay ready, there's guys that come in for an eight week camp, or there's guys that or their whole eight week camp is them losing weight. Wow. Getting in wow. shape. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah. But there's some guys that the eight week camp is they're studying, they're already in shape. They're, they're, they're like taking apart the fighter. You know I mean? The, the coaches yeah. are taking apart the fighter. They're working on specific things. Yeah. And the coaches are able to really work with these, these people. And then there's guys that you just, that, you know, you got to fill jacks in it and yeah. you're, just, you're just managing a personality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that's the that's the truth. Is like, are you managing a fighter? Are you coaching a fighter? Or are you managing their personality? Right. Yeah. And, and you try to like you try your best to give them ideas. You're like, well, how about we keep the fight standing for the first round? Then you can then you can wrestle if you want. Yeah. You know, it's like so you got to like make like uh, you have to make proposals. Mm. Like you really like. You know the, this this style that you you've been getting into. How about we just stay safe for the first part of it? Let's keep our hands up. Let's not drop our hands so much. You know, like let's let's keep kind of karate esque, you mm -hmm. know, Conor McGregor stuff mm -hmm. to a minimum. And if but if you feel it and you're starting to feel that 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 part of you come out, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. That's really us telling the, the fighter, hey man, like stick to what you're good at. If you want to, as you're if you're doing well open up and and play around a little bit if you feel that because you don't want to tell a fighter to to stop something right. because yeah. it's a creative thing right so it's like you just you're just trying to you're just trying to micromanage this guy's brain and his ego yeah yeah no that's there's that, some fighters that have zero they have zero brain just ego and <laughs> they are are a wreck because all they're doing is asking you how to fight and you're like, shit, dude, you don't know how to fight. Like, <laughs> you should have a good a good idea of what's going to happen in this fight. Like, I, I'm going to help coach you through it, but you can't ask me every worried question on earth. Yeah. Like, you're like, the one guy's like, well, you know what, this guy, I think this is going to happen. I think this is going to happen. I'm like, all that shit could happen. Yeah. Every single thing that you said could happen. Yeah. Let's or prepare for the things that are most, yeah. yeah. Or let's prepare for the things that are most likely going to happen. Yeah. We prepare for that. Then we prepare for a few special things. Then we get ready. We, we get we we try to make the, this guy fight you where you're best. Yeah, yeah. That's that's and that's it. Yeah, that that's ideal, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's the best way to go. Yeah. But but tell me about you. Tell me about um, how do you get that competitive fix? How, I mean, you know, coming from an MMA background, it looks like you're doing more uh, gi jiu-jitsu than you know anything else because that's what I see on your on your social media. Um, Kids. I get that? a competitive mix for my kids. Yeah. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a, a crazy, crazy good kids team. Nice. Um, we just won 372 points. I'll, I want to get the exact uh, number. Let me hold on and see if I okay. can't pull it up. Yeah. So new breed Savannah. So we went we went to another town. Um we were about an hour and a half away from us, and we just wrecked shop there. Nice. And we and we did that last year. Last year we did the same thing. We did four four different cities. We 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 basically took over. Um, so our kids team. Here we go. Our kids in a different town. We our best youth academy. We had 319 points, wow, 74 wins and 44 losses. Right, that's awesome. The next, the next academy under us was 123. And that's not even. The, I'm I'm looking at the wrong event. Hold on, that was the that was that was that was last year. That oh, was gotcha. December 9th. Okay, hold on. Let me get the the dang the one that's that one that just happened. Yeah, because. Past events should be March 11th. So that was that that was our last one. Yeah. Right. Wow. This is this is so this is the one that we just had. Where's this result? Let's say top list. So this year we came back and we got 322 points. So 65 wins, 44 losses. And the next team under us was 97. 
Wow. We had two adults compete, right? Two. Yeah. yeah. And we got 326, so we only got four more points, but we were the overall champions, 326 to 122. Wow, that's awesome. That's that's a good yeah. showing, man. Yeah. Yeah. And and so, how many how many kids do you have in your program? Not not competitors, but just kind of in general. In general, I would say 60 to 70, maybe okay. more. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a good size kids team. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, so I would say probably well no. So if I'm thinking about every kid that signed up and every kid that comes in, so we're 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 over a hundred for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's like I I think you know, and that's not that's just including jujitsu. So we have some kids that just fight, just do Muay Thai. Oh, okay. So, I'm trying to find back where you, where you are, where I hid you. That's okay. I don't. Oh. Have to see <laughs> there we go. Here we go. Got it. There you go. Yeah. Okay. See ya. All right. Yeah. Do Do you personally do you still compete? No. Okay. Okay. I can't. I, I'm not. I'm a shell of myself. That's the, the truth. I mean, even though I believe a shell of myself could could do very well. Yeah. Um. Like so, like my arms are weaker than they should be. Gotcha. Of the neck surgery. Yeah. I don't have any hooks in my feet, so I don't have any dorsiflexion. Wow. Um, I've just moved. So I've just moved around recently, working with one of the fighters at a. Like I did basically a class, which I haven't done in forever, um, for what with one of the fighters at Extreme Couture, and I would move around and I felt really good and I had really good, really good moments. Um yeah. but like if so if I train really hard, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to teach tomorrow. Yeah, the recovery, right? Yeah, I that's might, gonna be tough. Yeah. yeah. I might be so banged up. That's the same thing with traveling. I don't know, like if I don't if I take if I have to drive. And I don't take a flight. And it's like five hours of a drive and five hours back, 10 hours within a day or two days. I can't do that. Yeah. My, body, my body will shut down. And like, I've traveled enough already. I, I came, I did two Vegas trips in March and, or no, April. So no, February, February 19th to the 25th, then March 3rd to the 9th. And then I just drove to Savannah and back, which wow. was about an hour, an hour and a half, you know, like today, Sunday. And I just, I've spent about two, two days. Uh, I spent only last night with my wife. So oh, wow. she's sick yeah. now. Oh man. That's so I haven't had any time to do anything. And now I have to go teach another class Monday. I have to go make sure the business is running, make sure my side projects are running, make sure everything else is going. And then hopefully she feels a little bit better and we can hang out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah man. That's that's a lot, man. That's a lot. Especially like, you know, I I, I own an academy. I have I have business partners. So we kind of share the responsibilities. Um, but you know, I don't know if you're like if you run the whole show yourself, but gosh, man, I, I have so much respect for people that are running the show by themselves. Because there's four of us and there's always something to do. It's never done. You know what I mean? And I can't imagine. Yeah, that I know what you mean. Myself. I know what you mean hundred percent. And that's the, this is the crazy thing about this is that I don't think anybody really like, but, Oh, I could do this. Oh yeah. I can do what Malky does. And I'm like, man, you have no idea the, what it causes in a, in a family in a relationship and in, in, in and just your pure body, what your body goes through, what your mind goes through, how much time you have to spend. You know, it's like everybody everybody thinks that they're going to be the best running gym. But a lot of guys don't understand that I also don't have another job. Right. So this yeah. is my entire job. Yeah. Is that, yeah, it may be a, a job that, like, I have to do all the time and people are, would, would maybe like to do this job as well. But I don't think that they have any idea that, they think it's like all all joy. You know what I mean? Like, well, <laughs> right? at least you're doing what you love. Like, I don't love half the shit that I'm doing. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, but yeah. I, don't, I don't like selling. I don't like calling people that, that haven't paid me in two, in two months. Yeah. I don't like. That's a bummer. I yeah. don't like any of that stuff. And But me and my wife started it by ourselves. And 
you know, like that's why we're able to for it to be our only job is because we don't have business partners because we don't have, we don't like we still do the front desk. Yeah. Yeah. We still do the front desk. I still do. I, 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 I do some stuff, but I mean, just until recently I was, I was calling every single person. Now I have somebody I pay to do only four hours a day of calls of follow-ups of different stuff like that. And it helps, but it's not everything. I still got to do at least two or three hours of it. Oh, for sure, man. For sure. And the, and the, and the, the emails come in and with the social media, with the DMS and all that stuff and keeping track of everything and trying to stay, you know, trying to be like, you, you, you try to be a, a approachable, right? You try to be that person that, you know, it, it almost seems like you want to be like a mom and pop, but gosh, man, just responding to DMS and emails alone could be a full day. That could just be yeah. a full day. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. really difficult. And yeah, and you know, you talk about doing something that you love. Yes, we do love it, but I get to do what I love three hours a week. That was, I teach three classes a week and I absolutely love it. And, you know, and I train after the classes, I have an evening coach that, that does the, the, the mixed levels class. So I, I get to train. Um, but you know, outside of that, like it's responding to a lot of, you know, putting out fires basically, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and then, you know, and, and then, and then you, to... what's that? No, I was going to say that I was going to say, and then, you know, you, you think you got it all down, your inventory's good. You got, you know, classes coming up and everything looks great. And like, Oh shit, we're out of soap. Okay, yeah. gotta go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just little things like that that can sidetrack you, and you know it. It may seem like a small thing, but it's a pretty big thing. You're also dealing with a lot of personalities too. Yeah, you yeah. know, like some people are are super nice, and some people are super nice to you just because you are who you are. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're super shitty to somebody else, or they're super shitty to the front desk, or they're super shitty. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, like. The way some kid talks to me might be different than the way that kid talks to my wife, but he doesn't understand talking to my wife is talk. It was way more than talking to me. hundred percent. You're talking to me with, with, with also like all of them, like I'm the muscle. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, like, he's the gangster. So I try to tell people like, careful, you know, you can, you can try your best, to, but if she don't like you, yeah. I'm not, it's going to be very hard to be a sweetheart to you. <laughs> my wife is not, you know, just imagine, imagine, somebody talks trash to your wife and then you got to go home and, and, and Dude. talk, got to talk about it. And now, now this person like wants to have like, well, I love Maliki. You know, like he's such a good coach. Fuck, I can't even talk to you anymore, dude. We're, yeah. we're done. Yeah. Done <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. That's it, man. You don't understand my wife. Is, like, this is my family. This is what I go home to. Yeah. Like, so yeah, you know, you deal with all that stuff as well. You deal with, you know, people that are, that, personalities and deal with managing a bunch of different personalities is hard and get like i got rid of a ton of people from the beginning of of when i opened up and i thought i needed them because i thought that they were that they were good for the gym because they were getting you know they they came in they were okay at jiu-jitsu they had gotten a lot better mm. um and but they some of them came toxic to the culture mm, yeah and i yeah. and i almost hated showing up and coaching at some points wow. i was like i mean i just really hated it i hated being them being there i hated looking i try to teach them um you know and i have no idea you know they they they, they just they're just sometimes jiu-jitsu isn't what people say it is yeah it doesn't make us better it doesn't it just and it you become a black belt you don't become a better person you just become a large version of who you are with yeah. less rules because you are now the king shit right you know? <laughs> or at least and, some people think they are right yeah uh, you know because right. uh i got humbled real quick when i got my black belt so <laughs> yeah. well i mean but here's the thing is that there's people out there that are like that i mean i've always had a a aggressive attitude i've always had a learning attitude but i've always had like a if you cross me i'm i'm you know, like, and I also got raised in a, in a different environment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like a lot of these guys are getting raised in this, like, like where they get, I, they get to like handhold, get handheld the whole time. Yeah. And I was in an environment where this is just the honest to God truth is that there was one or two Brazilians that liked me. Right. They were really good. I mean, I Elton Barbosa was one of my, my favorite people to be around. Um, and also Laboria was, was a great, friend of mine um and my master you know um uh, but you know like 
I'm, I'm sure I, I, I had done something to piss some Brazilians off here and there or whatever, like, but I, I don't understand really what was done. Yeah. But Brazilians would come in. I'd see him talking to, to one of the other black belts, one of the other guys. And then this, he, he's, he's like a new black belt, like not new, but a, a black belt that's coming to town. Maybe he's going to be an MMA fighter. Maybe he's doing something. And all of a sudden they get closer to me and closer to me and closer to me. And then I know that, I know that this, this match is going to be like the world championships. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. you know, and then, then if I beat, then if I beat them, they're like, Oh man, my fingers hurt. You know, like, <laughs> and I'm like, I go like this. I go, yeah, yeah man, my yeah. neck surgery was eight months ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't, I, I can't feel my fingers. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. Wow. Yeah. But, that's, but wow. that's the kind of environment that, that sometimes you're not like, and that's not to speak poorly of anybody, but it's a cultural thing of like, who's this gringo, gringo black belt. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And some of these guys don't like them. So like they, they'll try to set, set them on you. And you'll know it right away. And I Elton who's a Brazilian, who's a Brazilian guy would always kind of like, Hey man, be ready. This guy's going to try to take your head off. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's they're that's they're already talking about it. Wow. That you know, it's like like not only that are they are, are they gonna try to beat you in your jiu but they're gonna try to hurt you. Oh gosh. You know I mean, so you okay. gotta, you gotta be on the point, you gotta be on point so much that that if they if they're gonna catch they they can't catch you. If they yeah. catch you, you can get hurt. You yeah, know what I mean so like so not only do you have to beat them, but you can't lose at all. Right. Yeah. So so like if, if you're not you can't take chances. Yeah. Can't be like, okay, I'm going to try this move. It's going to open me up for this. It's like, no, because they could break your arm and they're, they're going to try to, you know, yeah. like th that's so that I got brought up in that environment. And then people get brought up in this environment and they think that they're the same. Yeah. You know, it's like, very so different. it's very different. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and not to say that I, that, that those are all bad people. Those are just people brought up in a different boiler pot. Yeah. You know, like, yep. Like I was brought up in a different boiler pot than other people were. Yeah. And I can usually sniff that out when that happens or when somebody's being a little bitch. On, yeah. <laughs> right. you know, and like, like this guy has no idea what it took for me to get to where I am. Yeah. You know, and then he's creating a toxic environment here. I'm just going to get rid of him. Like, yeah. Boom, yeah. Gone, boom, gone. Now I have, now I have such an amazing environment. I have such a good, good vibes good I, I enjoy everybody that i teach my kids i love teaching and like i finally hit this this mark where like you know like man thank god i did what i did thank god my wife had you know like pushed me she was pushing me for like for like a year to get mm. rid of some people that i didn't get rid of yeah and i thought that that was what was going to happen was that people were going to leave with them and it would yep. affect the money you know, yeah you know i would I, i'd be and then that and that's exactly what happened Mm -hmm. but pe new people came yeah new people came other people moved into the town that had already had good belts that were that were that were talented i was able to work with those people a lot of people stayed yeah tons of people stayed it yeah maybe nine people out of uh, out of 250 and then i went up to to around 400 students wow four, nice. four something 420 450 something like that Beautiful. i doubled all my my students because the culture was so toxic there yeah that I, that I thought that that losing ten to twelve students was going to put me at you know like how much cash I was going to lose like yeah. that's a, that's at minimum probably twelve twenty thousand dollars yeah yeah right yeah so I go oh crap twelve to twenty thousand dollars is a lot of money <laughs> right you know like I don't want to lose that and then I didn't realize I was going to make I was going to make probably sixty to eighty right yeah <laughs> getting rid of that problem. Yeah, yeah, man. It, you know, that's it, it, why people people right. can't understand what, what you're saying with the business. And they can't understand is that you're going to make those decisions, and it's going sometimes it's going to look really, really bad yeah. for you on paper. Yeah. It's going because yeah. it's your livelihood. Yeah, and they go, oh man, yeah. this is going to be bad for me, and then it's not. Or sometimes it is. Sometimes it was the wrong choice, yep. and you, it and happens. you have to live with that 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 money that money decision. But yeah, those are the hard things that people don't understand is that. that you're doing jujitsu, but you're also looking at the pay at the at the dollar signs at the end yeah. of it because you have to pay yourself. You have to pay your your bills. You have to pay the overhead. You have to pay everything. Yeah, and you also have to keep your family, you know, yes. financially financially okay. 
Yeah. So. And, you know, and that's something that like, um, you know, people come in and, you know, some, some of my best friends came out and, and started training with me and not one of them, I call them my best friends because not one of them asked for a discount. They just paid because yeah. they were supporting me. And that's awesome. But then you got people that walk in, you've never met them in the, in your life. And they're like, well, maybe we can work a deal. I'm like, I don't even know you, dude. Like, <laughs> what do you mean work a deal? Right. Um, but you know, a lot of people don't understand. We're not just trying to keep the lights on at the Academy. We got to keep the lights on at home. Like we're literally taking care of two houses, right. With that, yeah. with that one source of income. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's a little, you know, and, and you know, in, in their defense, you know, people's defense, they don't understand that piece, right. They're, they're not entrepreneurs. They don't understand like, you know, when you're, when you've got X amount of dollars in, 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 um, in uh, you know, payroll coming up and you only have half of that in the bank, you're like, holy crap, we got to make some money quick. Right. And that's pressure. Mm -hmm. Right. That's pressure. So they don't understand right. the kind of pressure. So I don't fault them, but it's something that we got to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So it's, um, it sucks. It's unfortunate, but it's, yeah, but, you know, like that that's life. And, and you hope at some point to put people in charge of something like that, that where you don't have to look at that. You can just manage the manager. Yeah. But that takes a lot more money. Yeah. You know it what does. I mean? Like, yeah, it takes a lot more money. You got to make another decision to open up bigger. Are you going to do a bigger school or are you going to do another school? Yeah. Is that going to, is, is the other school going to drag your ass down with it? Like, right. because you did, you weren't ready. Yeah. That's my fear, man. That's my fear of opening multiple locations and you have, um, you have a school that's struggling that's being funded by the one that's not. So it's, I mean, you got to make a, it's going to be a tough decision to make at that point, you know? But are you going to do it or not? That's the thing. Are you going to hire a manager and get less stress? Right. Or are you going to, or are you going to own another gym? And get twice the amount of stress. Give me one second. I'm going to get a plug just so this doesn't turn yeah. off on us. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah. Take your time. We're, 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 getting, we're getting pretty close to the end of it. I'm, I'm kind of up against it on time. I've got another commitment this evening. Um, my uh, my mother-in-law does um, uh, a pizza night for, um, you know, for birthdays. So it doesn't always nice. land on the birthday day, but it's kind of cool. You know, get together and get your mind off of things a little bit. But listen, there's two, two things I want, I wanted to ask you. And, um, sure. so the, the, the first one is, um, your, the, your, your lineage, the, the black belts that are under you, what, what yeah. do they have or what do they all have in common? And what would you want all of the black belts that you, that you promote to have in common? Um, an understanding of top game, top game passing, um, I think is something that I, really enjoy and I got good at um, but understanding being on top and staying on top whether it's for MMA whether it's for jiu-jitsu whether it's for self-defense is everything mm. um, so like I like techniques that have exits like so if I go for an omoplata I'm never going to be on bottom of an omoplata I'm always going to end up on top yeah if I'm going to get something like a triangle I'm looking for. Yeah, I'll try to finish the triangle, but I'm always looking for a way to make that happen on top. Mm, so okay. passing, sweeping, everything's got to get, you got to got to get off your ass and, and get back on top. So yeah. my kids do a really brilliant job of taking people down. They do a really good job of passing guard and con controlling top, top control. Um, my kids do shit over neck arm bars. So like when they, like rather than like sitting back to their back, yeah. Falling backwards, we all fall forwards for, for our arm bar. So it's oh, like nice. a mounted arm bar. Yeah. You go forward, shin over neck, and they kind of flip and roll over. Yeah. And, and you get on top. So there's like, you know, I teach my kids the hard stuff so that they don't get used to the, the other stuff. So I don't have to stop the other stuff and fix it. We're gotcha. all doing smart things. I'm like, you know, we don't lose position. Everything is trying to be top position. And so the jujitsu will help their MMA if they ever did MMA, but I don't have care for any kids to do MMA or for yeah. any adults. I don't, that's not what I'm trying to sell, but in self-defense, we understand, Hey, this is, this is, you don't like, yeah, jujitsu self-defense. You have to learn how to fight off your back. Yeah. But getting on top is everything. Yeah. Right. So getting on top and knowing jujitsu against somebody who doesn't know jujitsu is the most dominant thing that you can do because being in mount against somebody that doesn't know how what mount is 
mm. or what Mount Escape is, yeah, you're gonna be there forever. You could you you could read them a story. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> people don't understand like how different jujitsu can be for people against people that don't know jujitsu. Yeah. They're watching jujitsu versus jujitsu. They're like, yeah. well, it gives and goes. It's like watching a boxer versus a guy that's never boxed. Right. Right. Like, so that guy's going to get murdered. He's going to get tuned up. But, <laughs> yeah. But in jujitsu, it's a little bit different because you take somebody who like where everybody in the world can throw punches. Mm. Right. And anybody can get hit by a punch. Yeah. Even if you're good. And that can, but on the ground, if we're talking about police, if we're talking about anything like that, being on top of somebody who doesn't know what's happening is the best place to be. So we make sure that their jujitsu is just like their, what would be a fight, mm. you know, okay. maybe we're yeah. not looking for the submission, but we're looking for the dominant positions. Yeah. Um, and I think Laborio instilled that in me after I liked to do nothing but play guard. I yeah. love playing guard. Yeah. And he beat my ass one day, you know, just like <laughs> beat the crap out of me. It's probably because I never, I just refused to listen. Cause I thought if I just kept submitting everybody that I win, I win, I win, I win. And right. Then it was just he just showed me like, hey, some people you're not gonna be able to submit, and they're gonna just beat your teeth in, and that's kind of Carlson. That's that's a really big Carlson thing. Yeah. It's top pressure, top being a top guy, and so I can say proudly that I in our lineage, there's no soft, there's no soft edges when it comes to being on top. I love we it. Are a top heavy game, and yeah. I think Carlson was a very would be proud of that and laborios would be proud of that and so my lineage is safe yeah you know? yeah i love it i love it and um what about uh legacy like you know long after we're gone how do you want people to remember you if they do i mean they will they will people will remember i'm not, you. I'm not shooting for that though okay. i mean i would love it um but I would love if some whatever I created and they didn't know who the guy's name is. So like you stand in many buildings that you don't know who it was created off of whose shoulders. Mm. You think this is great. I love this place. Yeah. Right. There's a place that I went to in Vegas just recently called Omega Mart. Right. Mm. It's an insane house. Like this place is insane. It's so beautifully done, scientifically done. I mean, it's just the most pinpoint beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I have zero clue who did that. Yeah. What artists did it? What scientists, because there's scientists and artists involved in this visual thing that you're going through. Yeah. I don't know who did it, but it doesn't matter. I enjoy it. And I know that somebody did it. And that person is amazing. Yeah. So if Black Label makes it years, like 200 years down the road and Black Label's still going, but they don't remember me, that's fine. Yeah. I'm okay with that because whatever I had, or if, Whoever I taught, taught somebody else and became somebody else. They're like, well, that's my lineage. This guy, they don't know much about me. You know, like yeah. they don't know much of my story. They don't know much about me. They're going to they're gonna know a lot more because of the internet, right? Yeah. Unless, yeah. unless aliens come down and zap all our technology. And then we have <laughs> right. to like, you know, who knows? Who knows? You know, we can, it could be the fire. It could be the fire of Babylon at some yeah. point and we all lose everything. Yeah. But They'll, maybe they'll know more about me because of this, yeah. Um, because of things that are going to be registered and kept in some kind of like internet archive forever. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. Like, do you really know much about your third grandfather? Not, not a lot. Um, but it, it, well, part of the reason I started this this podcast is um, I was at my mom's house. This is a while back. She lives in Houston, and um, I saw these old books. There are these old, just you know, just hardcover books. And, um, I said, Hey, what are these? You know, I'm kind of flipping through them. And she told me that my great grandfather was a, he was, he was like a, um, like a, oh gosh, what would you call it? Like maybe some kind of, he was in a leadership position for, um, you know, these people in Mexico, uh, that owned, um, properties, they would farm properties and, you know, the, the government's trying to come in and take some of the property. And he was part of the, you know, the team that went in and, you know, lobbied for the farmers. And the books are meeting minutes for those meetings that my great grandfather was in. Now, I don't know what he looks like. I don't know the sound of his voice. I never met him, but I've got those yeah. books. You know what I mean? So that's part of the reason I started doing this. You know, maybe no one will ever listen, but maybe my kids will one day. 
you know, and they can they can hear my voice and see my face, and that's kind of why yeah. I do. It. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's a really interesting thing because, you know, like I I know my great about my great grandfather, what they've said about him, mm-hmm. but I don't know who my great great grandfather is, and I don't know who right. my great 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 grandfather is. Right. But I'm a lot to do. Those that guy has a lot to do with me even walking around. Yeah. Right. So it's like we we are who we are. We we, we you generations and generations and generations past and those people become less important mm. but their importance doesn't completely wash away right you know what i mean like Absolutely. we don't have i don't have to be remembered like george washington i don't have to be thomas jefferson's bloodline right i don't have to be <laughs> any of that somebody's exists because i do yeah um and somebody will teach jujitsu because i did yeah um or you know and, that, and that's just going to be it and if i counter i don't count that's fine but it's gonna happen it's gonna make an effect somehow so uh, my legacy if it becomes like a fanatical legacy great yeah but there's plenty of people that were really really popular in the 60s and 50s that we don't know about at all right now Mm, that if you brought that name up your grandparents would know yeah we would have zero clue it'd be like oh yeah he was on hollywood squares he was one of the most popular people he went here here and here those guys are forgotten yeah, because they weren't pop, they're not pop, they're not important to our popular culture today. Yeah, yeah, as important as they were. Right. Oh, that right. no, that's that's in, that's an interesting way to put it. No one, no one's put it that way. That's that's really cool, man. That's that's good. That's good. Um, well, listen, uh, I'm kind of up against it time wise, but I just want to make sure people can find you, um, uh, on on social media and whatever. Uh, how how do people find you? So, uh, at Maliki Friedman is my Instagram. Um, then malikyfreeman.com is my, uh, subscription website, but I'm also creating a new subscription website. That's going to be like, looks like Netflix kind of okay. much better than where I am now. And I'm in the middle of building that website. Um, so that'll probably be in a week and a half. It'll be done. Is that going to be app? Keep the same it's gonna name. It's going to have an app too. Yeah. Okay. That's, okay. but that has, that's a whole nother headache. So just the website and the, mo- and it being available on mobile. Gotcha. So, that's 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 the number one. Then I'll worry about the damn app. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, like anybody can find me on Facebook. I mean, if they can spell my name, they can get to me. Right. Yeah. You you want to spell so you spell your first name? Kinda, yeah, it's M A L A C H Y F R I E D M A N. Got it. Got Maliki it. Maliki Friedman. Right on, man. Well, listen, Maliki, thank you so much for being on, man. I, I, thank I you. found you. I found you on Instagram, and like, I, I got a, I got hooked. I got hooked on all of the content that you put out. You're very generous with your content. Thank I you. really appreciate yeah. it, man. Yeah, yeah. Do you do all of your own editing, just out of curiosity? I used to. So up until February, I did all my own editing. Okay. Now I do not because I, I had gotten to twenty five thousand followers. Yeah. And I was putting out new content all the time, like techniques that like nobody, like I just make up. Yeah. And I'm like expecting to see it hit home runs. And I got to a point where I was just like, man, I'm like barely moving. Yeah. Um, and I let somebody else take care of it. Now I'm at six, like close to 60,000, like within two months. That's because awesome. They do much better. Te- you know, it's like they, they know how to grab, grab people's attention, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. Um, if you guys are interested in bumping up your Instagram, DM me as this guy named Kyle and he's amazing. Awesome. Um, and he's the reason why within a month and a half that I have, I've doubled my, my, my following. Wow. But yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I just took a, I roll, I took the dice and I rolled it and I was just like, you know what? I'm done trying to make it work. If it doesn't work after this, then I'll just relax, you know, like, and stop posting so much and yeah. just do my, my videos here and there. And then it got better. Yeah. Yeah. Another, well, another gamble. Yeah, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing a great job. I wish you all the luck in the world with the new website and um, the um, MMA instructional website as well. That That's coming up, man. I'm, I'm really it's excited. Amazing. For you, man. Yeah. 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 The, hey, winning one... corner, the winning corner MMA. That's, that's our thing on Instagram. It's just getting started for our Instagram. But when we put out this website, there's going to be nothing like it. Like we've gotten so far ahead of the world. Nice. Right? Man. Like that was our goal. So we've, yeah. we've filmed over 25 hours. Wow. Wow. That's content to use. We filmed over 30. Yeah. 30 to 35, but we have usable 25 hours of content. Wow. You're not going to be able to get 
you're not gonna be able to put all this in your head. That's right so away. cool. You know man. what I mean? That's... So we're we're way ahead. Yeah, man. I, I'd like to follow up with you if we could. Maybe do another. Maybe do another sure. episode in like six months to see how you're doing, and you know, get get a little, you know, help uh, any way I can help get traction on your website, man. I'm I'm glad to do it. And uh, you know, That'd Justin, awesome. Paul, our mutual friend Justin Paul speaks very highly of you. And when I told him you were going to be on the show, he was stoked. So I, I, I awesome. Yeah, man. I wish I remember what he what he what he wanted me to razz you about, but <laughs> he, knows, he knows I can't remember anything. I don't yeah. even know where my phone is right now. So <laughs> that's, you know, that's his fault for not following up. That's right. That's right. Well, listen, brother, um, if you're ever in Arizona, please hit me up, man. I'd love to have you on the show in the studio. And um, if where? I'm ever, uh, what's that? We're in Arizona. I'm in Mesa, just outside of Phoenix. Okay. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I plan on being somewhere sometime. Yeah, man. If uh, you're ever out here, I'd love yeah. to have you in here. Awesome. All right, brother. Sounds you take cool. care. All right, you too. Thanks, brother. Take care. Thank you.